In this video, I'm gonna tell you the exact things that were helpful to me on the start of my Bitcoin YouTube journey. In 2015, I was searching about Bitcoin on YouTube and it feels great 10 years later to be sharing about Bitcoin on YouTube because I know the exact things that were helpful to me. And here's the exact thing that was helpful to me. These milestones, like these stacking milestones of stacking Bitcoin were some of the earliest material that was easy to comprehend and easy to get kind of your feet under you when it comes to Bitcoin. And so this number, 21 million, like we know that there's 21 million Bitcoin and that's what makes it so unique is that there's a hard cap on it. Bitcoin is open source, verifiable money controlled by us, the users of the currency, unlike dollars, which are controlled by a small group of people and the price to borrow them is set by a small group of people that's easily manipulated by the political process. That's the two worlds, that's the two worlds. And so because there's only 21 million, it's really easy to set your stacking goals. For vi this video, this goal of 0 0.21, 0 0.21, the significance of that is that that's about $9,000. About $9,000 gets you 0.21 Bitcoin, okay? But let's put that in perspective. This $9,000, it's good. Like that's a great chunk of money. It's a great chunk of money. Put it in a high yield savings account, right? For now, the high yield savings account for now, because that rate is always like going up and down or whatever. That feels good, right? But for most people, and depending on your circumstances, it doesn't exactly move the needle too much in any direction. It's a great cushion to have, super great cushion to have, super great emergency fund to have, but as far as like a wealth building thing, $9,000 in one account is kind of just only a building block towards something bigger, right? Now let's contrast that with 0 0.21 Bitcoin. 0 0.21 Bitcoin, when you divide 21 million by 0 0.21, you get 100 million. Only 100 million people could ever have 0 0.21 Bitcoin. Now again, let's make a comparison. Let's make a comparison. The super, super rough numbers, there's about 56 million millionaires in the world. There's about 22 million millionaires in the United States, okay? So for $9,000 to be able to be in the top 100 million people in the world, which is still a lot of people, still a lot of people, right? Like it doesn't, it's not like, it's, it's still a lot of people. It's, it's on a side note, it's crazy how many people there are in the world. But for $9,000, kind of just like a good, it's like simple emergency fund type number to be in the top 100 million people in the world, that's significant. That's the leg up that Bitcoin can give you over saving in dollars. That's the kind of just material, like, that's super helpful when you're first trying to get your head around Bitcoin versus the dollar. And like, why is this a thing? Why will Bitcoin not die? And why do people constantly continue talking about it as this currency that is like growing and growing in popularity, especially when it comes to like the day-to-day -day usage barrier, right? Like, and that's the thing is that, I talked in my last video about making content for a broad audience versus a niche audience. There's still this giant barrier of the like, well, what about day-to-day -day life? What about day-to-day -day life? What about day-to-day -day life? Super fair question. Super, super, super fair question. And honestly, I'm gonna be really humble right now and say it's an open question. It's an open question on if point of sale processors switch to Bitcoin, if ADP payroll companies switch to Bitcoin, if checking accounts switch to Bitcoin. Because there's a lot of infrastructure for the ACH network and a lot of infrastructure for the dollar right now. You're right, you're right. From a network effect perspective, the dollar is the biggest currency in the world with the most amount of day-to-day -day usage. Is there any percent chance in your head when you look into the future that a different currency will take over? If there is, that's why you should get to 0 0.21 Bitcoin. If there is. If, if there's any above 0% chance in your head that you think the world could operate on a different currency in the future, I do. Like truly probably the main difference between like quote unquote skeptics and believers or whatever, or Bitcoiners and dollars, dollar maximalists and Bitcoin maximalists is if you think that the network effect of the dollar can be overcome. And I think it can. I think the network effect of the dollar will be overcome. And people that get to 0.21 Bitcoin will be in a great position to take advantage 
of that change of technology. There's another great video on YouTube called Everything Divided by 21 Million. And you can search for that video and go watch it. Definitely recommend it. And it takes, and it goes into why people that stack Bitcoin early are in position to take advantage of this switching of the world from dollars onto Bitcoin. And this concept of everything divided by 21 million perfectly illustrates how dollars are infinite, Bitcoin is finite. Dollars are infinite, which again, okay, wrap your head around that for a second, because that might be a little bit jarring. Dollars are infinite. The amount of dollars in the world are chosen by politicians and bankers, which again, I know that sounds like very vague and like, how, are you serious? Like, yes, like, yes. When you take a loan out from a bank, they are choosing to issue credit, issue credit in the form of dollars. They're choosing to just do that based on who you are as a person. Some people are able to borrow money at some rates. Other people are able to borrow money at other rates. And then we all talk about like the Fed interest rates, the Fed interest rates and all this stuff. Like that's them choosing the leading interest rate. Okay. So that's how dollars work. Bitcoin, there's software that everyone can audit and everyone can look at, and there's 21 million Bitcoin, okay? So with that hard cap, then all of the production of the world, all of the positivity and production of the world gets funneled into those currency units. What's the purpose of currency? Like, let's take it back to basic. The purpose of currency is to make trading easier. So that, if like just the classic example of just the eggs and milk, like eggs and milk. If I want eggs and milk, but I'm a producer of eggs and I need milk, I have to find someone who needs eggs and having that, like uh, having the wants perfectly line up, that's the role of currency. It facilitates a trade and makes it trade faster. And now society runs on money because money was a helpful technology that facilitated faster trade. So what we're doing is we made an even more effective money. Like the world, the world used software to make an even more effective money. And we're taking the management away from this small group of people that aren't doing the best at managing it. They aren't doing the best at managing it. They're causing a lot of problems in the world with their mismanagement of it. So what did we do? What did technology do? Technology created a better more fair currency that serves the people more. And it's because all the productivity in the world gets divided into those currency units. And so the currency itself becomes more valuable and more valuable and more valuable as us as humans level up. As us as humans level up, the currency that we hold gets more and more valuable, which what does that mean? It means you then have to work less. And this shows how deep the Bitcoin like rabbit hole that everyone likes to talk about goes. And it's because you start at the top with this concept of 0.21 Bitcoin and the difference of having $9,000 in the savings account or 0.21 Bitcoin. And then it goes all the way down into the deep philosophy of like, what is work? What is productivity? What is the purpose? Thinking about everything divided by 21 million is what helps you separate Bitcoin from stocks. It's what helps switch your brain into thinking of it as a currency. And this whole concept of is Bitcoin a currency, is Bitcoin an investment is still an open question. The same way that uh, we talked about how the day-to-day -day usage can be a barrier to some people kind of understanding what it's doing. Same thing with this thing of is it a currency, is it investment? Because most apps present, like just think of Coinbase, for example, presents Bitcoin just kind of as a ticker symbol, the same way as Fidelity or Schwab or TD Ameritrade or any of these things where you're trading equities and trading stocks, that framing, you're correct, does make it difficult to kind of break out your thinking of Bitcoin as just a way to earn more dollars, like an investment to earn more dollars. The day that you switch over into thinking of this like, Bitcoin versus the dollar. Do I believe that a different currency, do I think that technology is going to change the type of currency in the world? Do I think that can happen? That's the type of thinking that separates kind of thinking about Bitcoin only as an investment into kind of thinking about more of this technology shift. And seeing it as investment is a great place to start. Seeing it as investment is a great place to start on your journey to hitting that stacking goal of 0 0.21. What's going to kind of, I think, separate you from kind of people that continue to stick with it and continue to hit stacking goals is kind of this 
broader thinking of that technology and currency shifting into the future. But if you're still just kind of an investing mindset, that's super normal. And that's where I was back 10 years ago when I was searching for Bitcoin information on YouTube as well.